everybody, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. But you knew that. Here we are now with part three of this um, build of this lovely little kit. This is, well, not so little, it's quite a big kit actually. And this is the, where is the instruction manual? This is the unprepared Nigel as usual. Uh, this is the Sturmgeschütz 3 or Stug 3 Alf G early kit number DW16001 from Das Werk, made in association with Tacom, drawn by Jason. I was to say he gets around that guy. So this is part three and if you haven't seen go back and see parts one and two we have got all our suspension done and everything both internally and externally on the hull. Uh, we've got some bits and pieces still to do on the back here which we're going to add on. Uh, we've got all the mechanism going in in this video we've got all the mechanism going in for the um, for the idlers and everything for the adjustment of them. Uh, but here we're concentrating at the moment on wheels. Now if you've seen parts well, I don't think I talked about it in one but certainly talked about it in two um, because of the draft angles required in the mold and everything we um, we have to uh, consider what we need to get rid of so basically um, what I talked about with if you look at the the tires for the wheels and also the wheels themselves they have an angle on them um, somewhere around about 0.5 to 1 degree and as I explained in the previous video if you're molding something like this which is cylindrical if you have a perfectly parallel cylindrical mold you will get a perfectly parallel cylindrical part when I say parallel I mean it measures the same diameter here as it does there the trouble is as you take it out of the mold it will either just push the bottom, the ejector pin will just push the bottom out because it's got so much friction or you will end up just scoring the outside. If you look at some of your kits you will see on areas like these pins here you will see on some kits you'll see they've got like scoring on them and that's where they've not got enough draft in the mold tool and it's scored it as it's pulled it out. It's much like if you had a a one inch piston in a one inch and one thou bore and you pushed it out it would probably score you have hardly any clearance um, and that's basically what it is whereas if you have like a bucket or in America a pail which has a taper on it as soon as you release the item from inside there because it's got a cone it will actually come out so hence these parts have to have a, a draft on them to make them come out of the mold tool so we end up with tires that have a taper on them. So on the OD there will be a taper, on the ID there will be a taper. So basically you, the in section, instead of being like a parallel section through there, it will be like a wedge. Okay, so as it comes out, it will pop out of the mold easily and not damage everything. Um, and it's the same with the wheels. You can see on here, if I show you with this caliper, I can show you here that it's have a draft. If I measure the diameter at the bottom, so at the at the back end of the diameter we can see it's 26.15 millimeters okay you can see that on there 26.15 however if i come right to the front end you can see it's 26.07 20 26.05 say so it's got 0 0.1 of taper over that length okay so that's that's, that's two th um, four thou total, so that's two thou per side of taper. So as it pops out of the mould, as soon as it releases, it's free. It's not dragging itself out through a, through a parallel cylinder. So for the modeler, that's um, great because it means we get kits, but in accuracy-wise, it's not good. Now on here, it doesn't matter because you have the, the um, same angle on the inside of the tyre so that when it goes on, it will actually slide over the wheel okay like so and you can see it's very tight now you can also see on here that these tires I have basically made a copy of the wheel turned in aluminium I've put them on my lathe pressed them on and I've turned the OD flat so now we have a nice straight diameter okay without the taper we've got rid of those big um, sprue connection points you can just see the witness of them if you're going to pick it up on the camera but there is a witness there, like a dark grey area. You can just see it here by my finger. That's where the witness, where the, um, the sprue connection point was. So basically, we have the tyres now parallel. I've deburred them. I've gone round the edge of them with a sponge and just basically polished the the corners just to get rid of any sharp edges or anything on there. And that's that. I've done the same on these on the return rollers. I made up a little jig, held them in there, and I've turned across. So as you can see now, we have these parallel. 
these are actually, if you remember, these were made in two halves. We glued these up in part two and um, there's no seam there at all now, as you can see. And again, come in, come in with a sponge, just clean up the edges and just take away the sharp edge from the, uh, from the corner there, just to make them look a little more realistic. So that's that. Um, so basically, we're good to go. We've got a bit of flash on there. So they're done. Now, if you don't have a lathe, which 99.9% .9 of you don't, don't worry, you can do this without a lathe. But what I suggested, as I showed you in the last video, is basically when you've got assemblies like this, I mean, this is about the size of a wheel on, say, an M1 Abrahams in 135th scale. OK, so basically build up all your wheels or a Sherman, say, and then basically come along with a, with a sanding stick. You don't want a sponge. You want something hard and just sand at 45 degrees. OK, and just keep sanding. What you could do is black them up first. Um, so you've got a colour on there. And you can see where you've sanded away. And basically just sand like this and you end up with this nice straight parallel diameter going across rather than having a dome. You know, you don't want sort of the tires to look like that. When you, when you look side end, end on like this, you don't want your tires to be like that. You want them to be flat where they've worn on the t on the tracks and they're going to be flat. They're not going to be all domed and everything. So um, obviously, as I said, I've used the lathe to achieve that. Um, if you don't have a lathe, you can just sand them like this. And it goes the same with these road wheels. You would basically uh, put them together like this. OK, so you've got one there and then you have another one here. So you have them together like that. OK, just like so. And then put these together. Like that, have them glued together. And when they're all glued together and everything's all set, again, you can come on with a sanding stick and just sand them like this, 45 degree angle, until everything's all nicely cleaned up. Now, if I get a magic marker on here, I should be able to show you what I mean. And if you've got this kit, you can do the same as this and you'll see what I mean. When you sand across, because I've turned these in a nice and flat, when I sand across, you can see that I'm sanding the whole area. I'm not removing, I'm not removing from one side. It's coming from the whole area. They're nice and flat and smooth. Okay, they're, they're straight across there. They're not actually, they've got no tapering or anything. If you do this on your kit out of the box, I'll be honest here, I meant to leave two behind and do them manually to show you how it's done. I may have a look through my spares box actually to see what I've got. But basically, um, you know, for the beginner because they they need all the help they can get, guys. Um, so basically there you can see I've sanded across them and that is how you get your tyres nice and parallel. So the next problem we've got then with, with this model is the tyres are a very, very very good fit <laughs> very very tight um, my worry with that is yes you can press them on I've seen Andy's build and he just pressed well I, I flicked through Andy's build because uh, I didn't want to be distracted from my own thoughts with this kit which is something most youtubers do we don't tend to look at reviews we don't look at other people's builds but I did just have a quick look through Andy's build just to see if it was a lemon you know and uh, it's clearly not um, so basically um, these tires are too tight on the wheels. It takes more than just, you know, easy finger pressure to put them on. I'd rather they were loose and have to glue them. And my concern there is, yes, you can press them on. Yes, they can be, you know, just pressed on and left with no glue. But the trouble is when you press them on and they're really tight, the ring is obviously constantly under pressure. Now you saw in part two, when I glued one of these pieces here, which one was it? You see when I glued one of these that it actually split open on the back. You can see this you can see the crack in the part there running down from my finger down to the square lump below it. You can see it there where it's a shiny lump. And that's because the, the peg in there was tight. As soon as I touched some glue on it, it just split open. And this is what happens with plastic, certain plastics, and the tension. So my worry is you'll find yourself, you'll put the tire on, you'll put a dab of glue in behind, it'll split open. You put it on, you just leave it with a tight fit and you come back to your model six weeks later and you find that your tires have split open. So that is my fear in that area. So you could sand the wheel, okay, come in with something like a, a skinny stick and you want to stay away from the front edge. So what we could do is just sand the wheel and remove some of that diameter. Let's find something a bit coarser. 
Do, 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 do. I haven't got anything a bit coarser at the moment. Um, so let's just carry on with this. But you basically come along here and just sand away. And what I'm doing is removing some of the angle and just making it sort of more into a straight diameter until you get the tire to just slide on with easy finger pressure. The other thing you can do is come along with a, I've got some coarse, this is um, cheap, very, very cheap, nasty, wet and dry. As you can see, it doesn't roll, it kind of folds. So I'm using this because it's hard, because it's quite rigid um, and it will hold its straight diameter against the, against the tire and just go in and just sand away the tire you can see I've made this into a slight cone because what you don't want to do is sand this into a perfectly um, parallel and then have, have you know a great big gap around the front. The other thing is you see on here it's got a rim on the tire on the edge there and that is actually part of the wheel I believe. So uh, I will actually check my references. What you want to do is get your tire so that it's sort of, I mean that's not too bad but we could get it a little bit looser than that. Just put it into that cone. Oh, go on. And just, just sand away. And get it so that, there we go. That's, it's just now, it's a, it's a tightish sliding fit. And you can see that took just a couple of minutes. And once you've done more than one or two, and this bloody cone will stay as a cone and not keep unfolding itself. Why have I got a really itchy nose? Um, that was what I was working on. And just, you know, push the push in there, just sand it so that you're just removing some plastic. And we can also see in here, if you're going to see it, but in there you can see that it's sanded the front and the back. So obviously it's like a, 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 a hollow in the middle of it. So that's what you want to be careful of, is uh, not sanding the front. Because if you sand the front, you'll get a gap round here. So if I press that in there solidly, you can see it's it's quite easy to press in. It's much easier to press out when you compare it to, say, this one, which has actually been sanded as well. And that is a nightmare to press that. If I take one that isn't sanded, uh, do, 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 make sure we get the right way round. You look at the tyre lettering on the outside. You should be able to hear this as it goes on. Hear how tight that is? It's a nightmare. That's going to split open eventually, I'm sure of it. So basically, just do some sanding and just get them to fit nice and snug like that. Okay, and then we can come along with some Tamiya Extra Thin, brush it around there, just a couple of drops, and that'll just lock it in place. Means it won't come off. So there we go. So that's our, that's one done there. Okay. So just do another one here, just to show how quick it is, and you will basically get a feel for how much you need to do once you've done a couple. So okay. So that was about six turns. So put that on there. That's still a bit tight. You're better off having it loose than tight. You can glue it on. And then if you have got a gap at the front, you can fill it with some Mr. Surfacer. I've got to find a way of attaching this and to stop it bloody falling apart. Because it wants to straighten itself out. So just go in there a bit more. Slide that on. There we go. So that took, as you can see, what that take, 30, 40 seconds. And then I can just come along with my Mr. Mr. Servicer, no, Tamiya Extra Thin, and just glue that on, just like that. Make sure it's all nice and flush. And there we go, we've got a wheel. Now you can see we have actually got a slight gap there. So what I can do is come around there with some Tamiya Extra Thin. But that's going to be look absolutely fine under paint. Okay, so there we go. So, and if we do want to, we could put some Mr. Surface around there and then go around with a cotton bud uh, just to seal it all in if we want to make sure that we haven't got a gap there. But if this bloody paint, this wet and dry, would stay as a bloody cone and not keep undoing itself, I would be a happier man. Let's try putting the rubber band at the top end. If 
fact, what I'll do is tighten that rubber band up. So it really does hold it together. Let's see if I can get the tire over. Yeah, there we are. Oh, and now it's too small. So I've got to piss about with this, basically, until I get it right. And then we just basically, we can sand our wheels, our tires to our heart's content. And the last one, here we are trying to sand the bloody wheel now. Last one, just get down there, quick sand, like that. These are the spare wheels that go on the back of the uh, tank. These are actually slightly smaller than the wheels. So don't sand so much off the tires for these. And you can see you get a lovely snug sliding fit. And then finally, just put some glue down there. Put some glue down there, job done little drop around the front, let it capillary around, that's it. And there we are guys, and we have our wheels all done. So bring all these on show for you, you can see they're all done now, and all the tyres are on and we're all looking cool and dandy. So, as you can see, lots of them, lots of sanding, but at the end of the day, we have got a lovely looking bunch of wheels so we, we put them together and we've got the the peg in there it's going to go in there like that there we go and then they're going to peg together with a don't forget to put the uh, bush in the middle and there we go we've got a lovely set of nice parallel smooth square tires and what I might do now is go on and take some little chunks out the corners just to weather them a little bit, just randomly knock them with a file or something, or knock them with a knife. Um, and what I might do is I was growing Mr. Surface around here just to make sure I don't have any gaps. So, because uh, we do have the yellow paint on there, it will show the gaps. But, um, yeah, very, very nice. Lots and lots of work, quite a few hours in there. Let's get my little vacuum going. If you haven't seen this, this is my Tihu, and this is from uh, Amazon. I don't have an Amazon shop or anything, so I don't make any money out of this. I'm not promoting anything to make money. But these are great. And there is another one on there. This was about $9.99. There's another one on there, which is a very similar colour, which is about £6. Don't bother. I bought one and it was just awful. It didn't, well, it didn't work. So the batteries connectors didn't even touch the batteries. So, so we just turn that on. We can go around and then we can clean up our bench and get rid of all the sanded rubbish and that. Jess loves this. You might see a nose, here we go. You gonna see a nose? Jess, can you have a look? Let me see. <laughs> there we go. So there we are, that's our little uh, tea hoo and that'll pick up all our sanding dust. There we go. Hello Jess. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's enough. So there we go. And then um the other beauty of this is of course because it captures all the rubbish in there. If you accidentally pick up a part, rather than have to rip your vacuum bag apart your part's going to be in there so that's the uh, that's another good benefit with it but it's amazing what it picks up it's a great little tool that's the Tihu vacuum so i saw a guy in the, on a building a model car japanese website there i am still sweeping it off onto me lap um japanese website go build a model car and after he finished he'd uh, he used one of them i thought i've got to get one of them that looks really good so there we are guys that's all the wheels done so I think what I might do now is paint some thinned Mr. Surfacer around those rims just to make sure, just to be extra happy that it's all good. And then, um, well, at least on the outer ones, I'm not going to bother with the inner ones. Um, and then uh, and then we can get them, well, I'm going to get the backs of them painted first. Because what I don't want to do, and I have seen this before as well, if you have this like this, okay, and it all looks good. If you then come along with a light, or you've got a bright light looking in there, you will see inside there, behind those holes, I hold up there, you can see, when you look inside, you will see light grey plastic. And I don't want to see that, I want to see German grey plastic. So I will paint inside these wheels before I glue them together, because I am a big girl's blouse, if I'm allowed to say that. All right, I'm a big tart. Am I allowed to say that? Have I offended anyone? So sorry if I've offended anyone. <laughs> anyway. So there we go. So I've noticed I've still got a bit of plastic swarf on there. So I'm going to get my number 10 blade and just go round and just scrape that off. That's just an edge that's been turned over when I've turned it in the lathe. So if you've sanded yours, you won't have this issue to worry about. So I better check all the others now, just make sure they're all good. 
Yeah, that's good. That one's good. Yeah, I'll do this off camera. See you in a minute. Okay, so we've done all the... I've used um, Mr. Surfacer... Sorry, Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 Black. And this is actually... You see I've got on there air. That's actually thinned down. Um, so it's quite watery. It's about... Well, I won't talk about percentages because you can't with Mr. Surfacer. But it's thin. Um, so basically I've gone round the sprockets again. Uh, I keep putting on the sprockets. The idlers again. And just put another coat in there just to... Uh, let that all sink in and sink back. Obviously gone around all these wheels and just basically just to make sure and I'll grab the cotton bud and just get it all out of those grooves. There's lots of little grooves there. I think they have like split rings, don't they? Um, in real life. So I want to put these sprockets together because when we put them together, I just want to check there is nothing to go in between. Uh, no, there is nothing to go in between. So basically they have a, a, a peg on there and a slot in there and they are going to go together quite simply like that. Okay, that is it. So what I want to do is make sure that when I get them together that they're all lined up and everything and then I can get some Mr. Surfacer in there and sand it because I think that would be a smooth joint um, in there. So what I'm going to do, in fact what I will do, do -ka do -ka do -ka do -ka do Dookie 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 do. I will use some of my Tamiya white cement. And I did notice in one of my videos somebody commented I should change the brush in the white cement for the for an old uh, green top one. And you can see now that is exactly what I have done. I had done it before. Um, I'm just going to put some of this in here just to give it a bit of welding action inside there. There we go. Get that together. And then what I'm going to do is with the extra thin keep the lids closed because they stink. I'm just going to put a drop of extra thin in here and then go opposite and put a drop in there and drop in there and then give these a little, little backwards and forwards and make sure they get lined up because you have got some play in there and just make sure that everything lines up nicely and then it'll make the clean up a lot easier to get them looking lovely just make sure we've got extra thin in every joint and as you can see in there we've got some sanding to do we have mold seams in there which are unavoidable um, and they need to be sanded out and just get everything all nice and smooth so uh, you have to be careful not to ruin any radius or anything radii in here but um, I think I'll just probably go put some Mr. Service or that'll be it but the other thing, of course, if you want to, you can just plaster it all in mud, um, which is what a lot of people like to do. Personally, I would rather my tanks, I, I would rather build them as, you know, they've sort of just come out of the, not actually dead. Did you see that then, how that drip? That's what I talk about all the time. You have to be so careful with this stuff dripping off of the brush. Um, yeah, I like to do my tanks sort of not brand new, like they're fresh on the train. But I do like to do them um, sort of not all plastered in mud and everything. A lot of people like to cake everything in mud and really make it look worn out. Not worn out, but just absolutely filthy. Smash all the fenders in, you know, have fenders missing and everything. Which reminds me, I've just had a thought. I have got somewhere, I have... The Aber PE set for the Tamiya 116th Tiger 1. Um, and that thing was like £300 about 10 years ago. Or 250 maybe. I'll have to get out and do a review on that. You'll like that. It is ridiculous. Okay, so there we go. So that's those glued together. And they're going to fit in there quite easily. They just go into those. Remember we put those bushes in there. And they just slot in there and they'll spin and uh, very nice so we will um we'll let those go go hard for 24 hours and then we'll do some work on the on the seams no point in putting mr service on now because it'll just prevent the solvents in the glue from coming out really just slow the whole drying process down so there we are that's all lined up lovely that's all lined up lovely Right, let's get on with something else. Okay, so there we go. This is hours and hours and hours later now. I think it's about three days after I did the last bit, but um, or at least two days. So this is um, basically I've painted the wheels. I've gone round 
this Cybus and Black Mister Service, as I think I showed you in the last segment. Painted the inside the wheels. I masked off where the bushes are going to go um, and where the wheels actually join together because it's very tight fit. So you yeah, didn't want paint in there, making it even worse. Um, I've also just given these a quick blow over. These are the inside of the um, idlers, if you remember there, that, that uh, ring glued in there. And I went around with Mr. Surfacer and, and dealt with the seam. So I'm happy with how that's come out. It's really, um, really quite, uh, you know, it's, it, well, it is seamless. Um, I've sprayed up the, um, the return rollers as well. Had a bit of an issue, you can see on this one. Um, all of the painting I did, and I had one issue where the gun went, the airbrush went, pfft. <laughs> that was the Iwata, not the blooming, um, not the Bark Sharp, and it did it right in the middle of that wheel. So you can see we've got some heavy paint in there. So I might strip that and redo it because when you look at one that hasn't been like that, uh, you was wearing one with a very thin coat of paint. Here we go. You can see that it's um, it's quite a lot of difference. Get the light a bit better actually, light over the top rather than on the side. So you can see there, quite a bit of difference in the actual um, in the paint layer itself. So um. There we go. So that's all that. I just painted the back of the sprockets because I had some paint left in the airbrush. That's the only reason I did them. Doing a little bit of research, looking at tyres and stuff. I have to admit, I may well have been mistaken. There may well be that ridge on the tyre may be actually part of the rubber. Um, I can't seem to find two pictures the same. Some have nothing there at all. Um, I've also found some on um, Prime Portal where... It looks like they've got ridges of rubber in the tires so like it looks like part of the actual molded wheel here is actually part of the tire so the opposite of what i was saying so i think what i'm going to do is just mask it up with the nearest size i've got and then just go from there really um plus i mean the fact of the matter is i'm doing this gray with an oversprayed yellow anyway so it wouldn't have been very precise um but I will do it. I won't have paint all over the tyres because you have to imagine that when they painted it, they wouldn't have masked off the tyres. They just painted it. But as it got used and the rubber got crushed, remember these aren't tyres really, they're, they're solid rubber rings. Um, as the rubber got, as the, as the truck got, the truck, the tank got used, the rubber would have compressed and the paint would have all cracked off. So anyway, so um, you, you'd end up with the, um, with just the, uh, the clean rubber. Um, so that's basically that. But also what I was going to say is noticing... Looking around, I've noticed that the this part of the sprocket here has cast texture to it. It's not so much here, but it is back here. So um, what we need to do is mask this off, and then we're going to put some tasks, uh, cast texture in there using Mr. Surfacer. So uh, that'll be a bit of fun. That'll be for in the, probably the next video. Um, so I think we've had enough of wheels now. So I'm going to get all these wheels put away, put them in a bag or something, just put them away, um, get this masking off as well and um, get on with this rear end. Now you can see here I've got the photo etch part. If we go back to the instructions, one can see in here. There we go, flipping it out there. You've got this piece of photo etch here going in underneath. Um, I may change the build sequence slightly and do all this on top first and then put this stuff in afterwards. And the exhaust need to go in, but this plate here and these two little things I think I might leave them till afterwards and put them in after the photo etch and then I can glue all this in get the rear panel on and just stick the photo etch up into there and then fit these panels in afterwards because I think getting that photo etch to slide in there you know because you'll have these two well, these four brackets here sat vertically above these two with the plate and the exhaust and everything in the way and this plate and you've got to basically slide that into that gap and I don't think it's going to be very easy um, so, and also this, the main joint, this rear panel here, this is going to be your main visible joint. So that out of all of the stuff you see in there, the one bit you want right is this joint here because you've got this, again, you've got this lovely weld on the end of this part here, a lovely weld, and that's going to go into there. So, um, so basically we've got that right. So we'll get that on with those four plates get that right and then we can stick everything else in afterwards and everything else doesn't matter so much as this. Um, the other thing was with this paint, have a look, it may just be my kit, in fact it's gone back again, it's actually bowed this way. Um, so when I put it on with the four pieces when I dry fit on, the, the ends are sticking back. So um, you can see if I grab a straight edge, um, you can see how it's bowed, it's actually gone back again. I'm going to have to put it in some hot water. 
um, but you can see on that end you might not be able to see but here there's a gap and it's basically just a constant bow all the way along and I've pulled it back and I really don't want to snap it but um, it just keeps going back on its own so obviously that's going to put a lot of strain on those glue joints so I think what I'll do is get it in some hot water get it under a nice hot tap let the heat get through it and then just hold it like this and if anything let it, you know let it set the wrong way and then it should go back straight a bit like a, um, a Lexus LFA I just found out the the Japanese engineers there's something else the Lexus LFA they found that in certain conditions with certain temperatures and abuse and everything the com rods on the engine would bend um, fore aft so basically the Conron would bend fore aft, so it would, it would twist the piston in the bore and it would give accelerated piston and bore wear. So what they did, they pre-bent the Conrods the other way. So, you know, if, if it had like a, I don't, know how, I don't know how you would measure bend, but if it had like a, you know, sort of a one degree bend, it wouldn't be that massive, but it had a one degree bend this way, they gave it half a degree that way so that it, in, it came back to normal. Incredible, absolutely incredible. And you know that engine in that, that Lexus LFA, it can rev from zero to nine thousand RPM at, at, in in neutral. It can go from zero to nine thousand RPM in point six of a second. Jesus. Anyway, enough about that. Let's talk tanks. So I'm going to go and get this under the hot tap, and then we can get this fitted in with those four brackets, and um, I get all these wheels put away as well. Quite amazing actually how this responds to hot water. I've never known plastic respond like this. It just went. It just like just, it just kind of went from being a large springy thing into just a you know like a like a piece of lead almost. Absolutely wonderful. So now I've got a, I've put a slight twist in it the other way, like the Japanese engineers did, and hopefully if it was, if it's going to spring back, it'll just go back to being flat. But as you can see, it's um. It's much better now. A very slight gap in the middle. So uh, there we go. So um, basically, I am completely changing the build sequence here. If you look here, what we've got is, if you remember, we were supposed to fit these to the rear panel, and I haven't done it because when we fit these on, uh, which way do these go? They go this way, don't they? When we fit these on, we have a gap in the sides here. So if I put that on there, you can see there's a bit of a gap in there. I might put some plastic card in there just to, just to fill it out. Um, you don't need to. I'm just being a big girl's blouse. Um, but I don't want to put them in yet because I want to be able to get this panel on really solid and everything first. Um, and I might put the photo etch panel in before I fit that. So basically what I'm planning to do here is actually... I've, do, I've done this, but I've not put that um, tax disc holder on. <laughs> um, I've fitted the rear panel, but I've not put these these um, brackets on. I'm not going to do any of this here yet because it's all going to be sticking out and quite fiddly. And I've got a feeling I'm going to have to be doing lots of clamping and taping and pulling and stuff to get this to go on right. So I'm going to miss all this out for now. Okay, miss all of that out because all of this is going to go here and it's going to stop me fitting this photo etch plate, which is going to go in there. Okay, so what I'm intending to do is see if I can fit that photo etch plate with, and then get the exhaust in afterwards. If I can't, I'll put the exhaust in first, then I'll put the photo etch plate in, and then when that's all nice and dried and gone and everything, then I'll put all this other stuff in. And that's my plan of action for today. Um, the other thing is, on here you can see this piece here, C43, we've got this, um, this opening, this flip open panel, and then we've got some tiny little where are they? They're in here. We've got some tiny little um, hand wheel type things. Okay, these tiny little things here that are going to be on here sticking out like that. And obviously if I'm going to be clamping and stuff, they're going to get knocked off. So I'm going to leave them off for now as well. So my intention now is to go, if this doesn't work, then you know not to do it. But if it does work, then I think it's the best way to go. So my intention now is to go... Uh, B24, B23 and this rear panel and get that all on um, nice and solid. So in here we have these parts. Now as I say, I was looking at how it all goes um, and 
it, I think it's going to work. If it doesn't work, it just means we've got to take things apart again. Um, but, you know, if I make a mistake, then you don't have to. So um, I need to keep that out of the way. I don't want to catch that. So, oh, by the way, that's been um, primed with the Mr. Metal Primer thinned with the Mr. Color Rapid Thinners. And Mr. James Mower, who watches all my videos, tells me that that works. So we shall see. Because me and my experience, I have found this stuff doesn't work at all on Photo Etch. So um, we shall see. Um, so when we paint that, we'll do a little test to see how easy it is to scratch. But uh, that's basically, I've basically gone over it with a 400 grit um, stick, matador stick. Then I've degreased it in alcohol and then let it dry and then painted it with that. So it's got every reason to work. And if it doesn't work, then it just doesn't work. So, but I've noticed that Hero Boys sell a two pack photo etch, um, etch primer. So I might try that. Um, right. So basically this is going to go on here. So these... We've got B24 and B23. You can see one's got a large cutout, one's got a small cutout. And the small cutout's going to go on the outside. So that's going to go in there that way. Okay, so that's a tight fit in there. And then you've got the one with the larger cutout is going to go inboard in there. That's not a tight fit at all. That one's going to go in there and that's a snug fit. And then that one's going to go in there and that's a snug fit. Oh, and one other thing, by the way, guys, um, look out on the Daswork website. You may see this video or my review or whatever on there. They, I've noticed on the Daswork website, they ask you to send in any videos you've got promoting their, their products. So I've done that, and they've actually replied to me and said, like, great video, thank you very much. Um, but I haven't seen it on the site. So whether they're going to put it on the site, yeah, I do not know. But, uh, hey, maybe we'll be famous. We shall see. But, um, there we go. So, some glue into there. This needs to be nice and strong because it's going to, basically the back of the hole is going to fit on here and everything. And then that is going to basically slot into there. We've got four, four slots in the rear panel. They're going to go into, he says. Oh, it needs to come up higher. There we go. And now, because I had a huge gap here before, because I've straightened this panel out, it seems to fit beautifully now. So, what I'm going to do is put some extra thin down in here and get these glued in place. like so and that's going to stay there on its own and now you see we've got a nice joint here so I can just pull that up and what we're going to do is put some extra thin in here let that capillary in get plenty in there because there's a quite a big joint it's not just that little edge that you can see there's a lot of um, there's a lot of contact in that area you can see it's oozing out of there, which I don't really want it to do. But what I'll do is let that ooze out. It's going to wipe that away quickly. I'm going to hold that in place and then get some tape. I'm going to use this Mr. Hobby stuff because it's mega sticky. And then I'm going to take that down. And if you notice, I let the, the glue gel off before I put the tape on. Um, if you put it on first, if you put it on while the glue is wet, the, the, the glue will capillary under the tape. So you need to be a bit careful of that. And then this side's going to be the same. As you can see, we've got a little bit of pulling around to do, if you can see. If you can see what I'm doing. I'm having to pull that down and around. And that's fine. We'll get some glue into there. And then underneath, this is becoming quite a bit of a brute to handle now. So get that glue into there. I should have got a piece of tape off first, shouldn't I? Just hold that in place. Grab some tape. And I'm just going to put some tape on that rear panel. Pull the panel into place. 
So I'm going to get broken on the front there and then just pull that down onto there and that's going to hold that in place. So there we've got our rear panel now fixed in there without too much stress. And it's all good. And then what we can do is just run some glue up inside there and a drop down inside there, just a little drop. So there we go. And then the other thing I'm going to do is make sure that these are glued in place solid. <coughs> solid! <laughs> um, so that everything's looking good. You can see there that they're actually wanting to come away so what we need to do now is clamp them in place because what we're doing is pulling it around. So um, I think actually I used to wash. Shall I use tape again? I think I might see if I can clamp that because the those bolts should stop the pegs flying off. There we go. There we are, happy with that. I'm just going to do a quick check. I just want to see, will this fit? It only goes one way. It's got like little legs it sits on. So yeah, that fits in there beautifully. So you've got the contact areas there, there and on the outsides. So as you can see, we can get that in, get it positioned, have it all nice and neatly in place. A few little dobs of super glue from the inside. And the, and the outside edges, and it will be in there lovely and solid. And um, yeah, nice, very nice. So, oops, stuck on that tape. So I think that's gonna be the way to go. And then we can, all this stuff here, you see, we can add in after. Like these bits here are gonna go, uh, how are these gonna go? Like that or something. Go like that, is it? Yeah, they're going to go in like that. So you can see they're going to sit. You can see when I hold that there, you can see that it's sat directly on top of that photo etch. There's a tiny gap for the photo etch to go into. So basically, if you glue these in first, you're going to be having to get that photo etch to go in. And it's going to be all in the way while you're pulling this around and clamping it and everything. And you just run the risk of just everything bending up and going mad. So, um, and actually I can just check now while we're on camera. If I put that in place there, like so, can I fit the exhaust? Do, 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 that's that side. Um, sorry, it goes that way, doesn't it? Can I fit the exhaust with that photo etch in place? And the answer is yes. There we go, that's in place. So there we go, so it can be done. We can have the photo etch fixed. And then that panel there is going to go onto the top of there and cover everything up in there, like that. So yeah, it will all work. So we can get those exhausts in. We can twist, that's, that's a good idea. Twist them like that and then put them in. So if that one's in place, come on up, come on. You know you want to. There you go. So if that one's in place, can I fit the other one, or does the other one get in the way? So put that the wrong way round, Nigel. Duh. That'll go in like that. That'll twist round. There we go. So lovely. Shut up, compressor. <laughs> Bit of dudes there for you. So there we go. So um, all going well. All going together lovely, all fitting like a dream, and uh, all nice and strong and good structure and everything. So, there we go. So, I'm now going to have to let that go off before we fix our, um, our photo etch in place. Okay, so I've cut a couple of pieces of plastic strip to go onto that little bit there. Um, and you can see also that I've put Mr. Surfacer along this joint just down the corners to uh, 
just fill in that any little gaps around that weld just to make it look pretty and um, if you think I'm being too fussy um, yep I am um, as far as I'm concerned it's a model I know most people don't really worry too much about uh, think tiny little gaps and things like that on their AFVs I, I, I do so you know I want it to be um, as nice as I can possibly get it and also, I mean, you guys watch the videos and a lot of you comment about how much you enjoy my hints and tips. So, you know, you may not ever build a tank, but you might be into ship models and the sort of stuff. Not ship models, ship models. Um, you know, you might be, uh, you might learn a thing or two from just me dealing with this. And the reason I'm using a cotton bud rather than a, um, a, a, a scalpel or a sanding stick or anything like that. The reason I'm doing it this way is because I don't want to lose the detail. And I've done this time and time and time again, but not everybody watches all my videos. Some people will see this one and never see another one. And uh, this is what I do. It's just to remove the Mr. Surfacer from the joint without destroying any detail. So if you've got an aircraft with all loads of rivets in the wing route, or you've got you know a ship model with portholes and stuff, not a ship model, a ship model, um, you know, you might want to... Uh, consider doing this rather than using sandpaper and stuff so you can see it enables you to get in and remove the excess mr surfacer but it's left it's left it in that little this the gaps a lot smaller than it looks it's just because it's sort of in the corner but um you know it's kind of uh, it's a good way of getting the mr surfacer away from the areas you don't want it without ruining your detail but still remaining filled There we go. So that's that job done. So we've put that in the bin. We don't leave them on the side because then we pick them up and use them for something else. And yes. Um, so I've removed the paint from these areas here. So I'm going to take, just test fit this. So we'll put this up this way so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to add the plastic card onto the back of these brackets here. These are the idler adjusters. So I'm just going to add this he says, Johnny Stumpy Fingers. And there we go. And I think I'll use quick setting on this so that I can sand it quickly. And that will capillary up underneath it. And then we can just move that in place, just like it's a decor or something. Just get it in place, get it in position. there we go that's the place there do the same on the other side get that tape out of the way let's position that in there it's stuck to my finger oh why is it stuck to my finger there's nothing on my finger <laughs> it must be static that's crazy what I'll do is put a drop of um Mr. Surfacer on there and then work quickly just dab it down, there we go, that's how to get rid of it. Just move that down a touch. There we go. And then we'll put some extra thin under there. Some under there as well, so it goes under. Let's just put some under the top here, just in case. And then I can move this around just like a decor get it finally in position and that's it and then just finally just to make sure because the worst thing you look with this plastic strip is when you start trimming it or sanding it it just comes off that's the worst thing that can happen it doesn't ruin your day but it's just good you know anyway so there we are so that's now what we can do now is sand that flush there and then, then when these panels go on, instead of having a gap there, they're going to sit, that's that side, instead of having a gap there, they're going to sit nice and flush into the corner at the back. So just make it look a bit more realistic. You're never going to see it, but hey, I know it's done right now. So um, put that, that way up. let those dry and then we can sand them flat. And there we go, that's those plastic strips now, sanded, you can see I've sanded them from the outside, so they're flush there, and I've sanded them from the back. 
All I've done there is taken a magic marker, just put a couple of dabs down the inside on the grey, and then come along with a sanding stick. I've used a 400 grit Infini, and then just sand until the pen marks disappear. And then you know you're flush. And I'm keeping the, the sanding stick flat in this area. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing, can you? Keeping the sanding stick flat in this area and then just sanding until the, the pen you can see is clearly being rubbed away. And you can see I've got a little bit more to go there. It's going to be fine. If you want to come in with something coarser, this is an Infini Zebra Stick 150. You could just come in and use the. I'm, I'm not sanding it flat. I'm using the corner of the stick, and that's just to uh, knock back, knock back it, knock it back a bit quicker. And then you can just come in with your 400 to finish off. And then when we put the, that's the wrong side. Where's the other side? When we put this part in, we will see, just get the swarf out of that hole, we will see that this goes in like that and then now we've got a lovely flush joint in that corner rather than having a gap there. Now I can see that I just need to trim a little touch of the plastic card away from that corner there. Just to get it looking a bit nicer there we are so there we are and like you say you know over the top probably model making yes so there we go so I'm just going to trim that top corner as well just to keep it all looking pretty when it's all covered in dust and dirt it won't matter at all but hey why do we do the hobby? Because we enjoy building models, so why just throw them together? Right. There we go. So I'm not going to glue them on yet until I've got that photo etch in. And I'm going to leave that to dry for a few hours before I start thinking about taking that off. Okay, so here we are now, a couple of hours later. And I think we're ready to sort of start looking at... Getting this moving on. I've got to look at the time as well. We will have to think about finishing this up soon. Um, so what I'm going to do is peel this tape back here and just peel it back there. I don't want to take it off because I don't want it to um, come unstuck. I'd rather leave that like that for like 24 hours and let it really cure. Because remember I did put a lot in there. So um, good wild action going on. That's what we want in there. So this piece of photo etch has got to go in here and as you can see on here we've got these little raised lugs in here um, to get the light a bit better for you little raised lugs you can see on there there's two of them on each so they're going to glue onto this um, onto this piece of photo etch so that's going to go we've, well, the photo etch has got two sides one side is just dead flat but the other side has got all this lovely mesh on it so we're going to make sure we've got the mesh facing up if you like it's actually facing down but facing up um so there we go so we get that in there and it is slightly wider than the actual hull itself so we'll just make sure we have it central now what i do want to do is what i do want to do is um scratch off the areas where the um where I've got that etch primer because the super glue will stick better to the brass I think than it will to the etch primer and I've got a feeling that that is actually um, worked well because the etch primer feels quite difficult to scratch off so then we're going to have one here one area here and then we're going to have one area here And then we're going to have that there, this area here, and then over here, and then there, and there. 
there and there. Okay, so that's going to drop into position on there, just like that. We can actually get it equal about, but if you look on here, you've got these slots in the in the back plate. We can get those lined up with the inner edges so we can get this all nice and square. So what I'm going to do is grab some super glue and I'm going to use, not the rocket, I'm going to use this one, which is the no nonsense super glue from, um, this is from, from the UK, a company called Screwfix and they, um, they have this no nonsense range and it's just really cheap. But this super glue dries really strong. But the beauty of it is it takes quite a little while to go off. So um, that's one of the good things with it. It's not sort of instant. So I'm just going to grab a cigarette lighter, clean my glue looper, got the glue off of there. Okay, if you remember, I used that last on that um, on that Stuka windscreen. So it's got that. Uh, what's the glue called? I don't know what it's called now. That's the one. GS Hypo which is for clear parts. In fact, that would probably work on here quite well. So what I'm going to do is put a couple of drops on here just to get us going. If you hear the rumbles, it's my stomach. I don't, I've don't. i just happy lunch and now my stomach rumbled and I don't know why. Your stomach should normally rumble when you're hungry, shouldn't it? There we go, and there we go, there. Just put a decent little drop on here. There we go. So that should stay wet long enough for me to get this done. So I'm going to put this down in here. Get it lined up and then just drop it down on. And that should do us. Yeah, I've actually got it over one way, so I need to take it off again. Okay, so I managed to get it off just by getting a knife under it, just peeling it away. And then just putting a rule on top, just like so. I'm giving it a good old push down to make sure it's gone down on those lugs nicely. And there we are. Put a rule on top so that if I rub it like that, you see, it'll just, it'll just bend it all around. So if I put the rule on top, then it stops me actually putting my fingers through it or just bending it all about. So that's that on there nicely. That's that all done. So... If you want to add any strength, just put a drop of super glue along the edges here or something. Um, what we could do is put it on the inside so it doesn't get seen. So we can just get a drop of super glue on our glue looper, put a drop in there, put a drop in there, just like so. The other thing you could do is add some plastic strip in there, just to give it, you know, something to sit on. But uh, I don't think it's going to go anywhere because, as I say, it's sandwiched in between in between this uh, this wall and the and the parts that go beneath it. So that's that in there like that nicely. That's that all done. You can see I've got some glue in there now. There's two lumps in there, and a couple of lumps on either side. And that'll just go in there and just lock that into place. Right. So now we can look at our instructions and see what. What is required of us next? I've got bloody I've been doing reviews, I've got bits everywhere. Right, so um, we'll get this on. These are gonna go on first. So these are a part of our adjustment mechanism. Um, I'm gonna do all this, I'm gonna do all this after I've done this, because otherwise I'll hold it and knocking that around. So these are gonna go on here. 
with the angled face pointing down. So that's going to go in there like that. Okay. And what I'm tempted to do is paint this first. Because otherwise it's going to be difficult to get in there with the airbrush and get that covered. So I think what I'll do is paint all that there first. Paint all up inside. And then we'll push forward. There we go. As if by magic. All painted. Does look nice, doesn't it? Nah. Yeah, not worried about these. You can see these glue spots here where I've glued it. I'm not worried about them because it's all going to be hidden. It's, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Very nice. Right, so I also painted the tops of these because they're going to be up against the uh, the, um, the 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 mesh there. So I can hear all you AFE guys shouting, what are you doing? You shouldn't be doing all this pre-painting. Just build it. Yeah. So I'm going to glue these on. So I'll tell you what I'll do, I will put cement under there, just put a drop there, but I don't want it all oozing out, do I? So there we go, that can just sit there, and then I can just run a very quick bead in there. There we go, that's that in place. And then we'll put some extra thin there, and then just drop this on. Just like so. Oops. And that will sit there and then we can run around. Just like that. And I'm also going to put some down this seam. We took all that trouble to get that seamless. So we'll get some glue in there and really make sure that it's all sealed up. Same on this side. Just get some glue in there. There we are. Pillary action will pull that around and do its thing. So that's those done. So it's coming together on the back end. So we will now look at getting the rest of this up together. So those exhausts are going to have to go on. I'd like to leave them off and peg them separately. Go to time with the rust in and show you guys how I do it. Um, can I put these parts in. No. I'm not going to be able to put those in and then get the exhausts in. I can get the exhausts in. Wrong way around. I can get the exhausts in, lovely, no problem at all. Like that. And then if I put these in, they sort of frame that in, don't they? Um, they go like that. So uh, yeah, I need to put the exhaust in at the same time. That's going to make them a little pig to weather up and get them looking nice while they're inside those boxes. Do, 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 do. Let me have a think. Okay, we have a solution. So this plate here goes in there. And that plate, as you can see, boxes in the adjusters and also boxes in the exhaust. Now, I want to be able to paint the exhaust separately and then fit them afterwards because they're all going to be rusted up and everything. And it's going to be very difficult to get a nice effect inside that box, but also have it all painted and everything nicely. So I've been looking at ways of doing this. So what I've discovered is if I sand off, just that one, isn't it? If I sand off about a millimeter off of here, you can see if I put these together, you can see that this one on the right, this one, is slightly longer than the one on the left. That's to enable it to slide down. So if I put this plate in here, and that's imagine that's glued in place, I can now slide that exhaust into there. And because I've removed some plastic, it slots down, and I can fit the exhaust after all the rest of this is fitted. And then this plate can go on afterwards with a couple of dabs of super glue. So that's what I'm going to do. So in the final part of the build, we can put the exhausts on and have them looking all nice and rusty. So uh, just take just take a coarse sander and just take some material off of that pipe. Because these pipes just end up going into the middle of nowhere. They don't actually fit anywhere as such. So I can get this plate out here. And then I can show you, 
I can put that plate in there like that. Okay. Hold that in place with this hand so that you can see what I'm doing. Go in, just wait, right, there we go. So that's gone in there like that. Okay, and now I can take, is this the right exhaust? No, this is the exhaust here. No, that is the exhaust there. So now I can take this, I can hook the exposed end of the, of the exhaust pipe into there. And I can drop that down in and it will go down in between and slot in. So that's what we're going to do. And that works. And as you can see, I was going to show you, wasn't I? When the exhausts are in, and they're actually fitted in place, like that, then the tops of the exhaust just come up into nowhere. So there's nothing to worry about there. So there we are. So that's how to get our exhausts on. So we really are messing with the build sequence on this now. So we can get these plates glued in. So this one's going to go in this side. Just like that. And some extra thin into that corner. And drop into there. And go down there, that'll hold that in place. And then this one's going to drop into here. Drop a glue in there. Just like so. Get a drop in there. Let it run down in there and that's that job done. And we'll run over a top here, over the top there. And just leave that to dry and they should dry nice and solid. And then we can get in there with some grey paint and get them all nicely painted. So there we go. It's coming together guys, so you can see the back end is, uh, it's like a bloody racing car, isn't it? I've managed to get glue on there, but as I always say, my tip is, you can see I've got a drop of glue on there. Touch it in the light, don't touch it, just leave it, it'll be absolutely fine. It may need a quick swipe with the sander, and that'll be it. So I'm going to call it a day there for this part, because it's gone on for ages. Um, I'll probably edit a lot of it out, and then... Uh, we will look at um, what we're going to do next in the next video. So I'll see you for part four. Thanks for watching this one. Um, what you haven't seen in this video, because I'm going to edit it out, I've started working on the main sprockets and getting a textured effect on them, but then found they had a great big seam. So um, they've got to be put to one side and left to dry, and then we'll sand the seams out of them. Um, so there we go. Next is going to be getting all this adjuster mechanism on there but I'm going to paint in there and get some paint in behind where they go first because I like to as you can see here like the shock absorbers I like to get the grey paint in behind so I've got no light grey patches of plastic left anywhere so um, I'll see you for part four so Jess hair there I'll see you for part four and uh, thanks for watching don't forget to hit that subscribe hit the like if you don't like what you see hit the unlike twice and um, I'll see you probably next week for another buying for another premiere bye for now